Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and make sure you are subscribed to the All This Math YouTube channel. Make sure you like this video, make sure you share this video, and even drop a comment in the comment section. All right, today's lesson, we're talking about rounding numbers. And specifically, we're gonna round a number to the nearest 10, right? So that means we're gonna round it to the nearest, you know, number that would be in the tens place in the number. All right, um, I definitely wanna shout out some students over on the west side of Chicago whose teacher requested this video. Um, shout out to all y'all. I hope this video helps. All right, so the number that we're dealing with is 5,997. So we should first be able to make sure we can read that number properly. We know that the five is in the thousands place. Actually, no, hold, hold. Let me start from the far right, right? We should start with the smallest digit, right? Each of these are digits which comprise a number, all right? So seven is in the ones place, nine is in the tens place, this other nine is in the hundreds place, and this five is in the thousands place. Sometimes when you see numbers written, there might be a comma, right? After the third digit, when you go from left to right, so one, two, three, comma, and then if there was three more digits, then there'd be another comma, you know what I'm saying? So 5,997. Now we wanna round this to the nearest 10, right? So we first should identify the digit in the tens place. This nine right here is in the tens place. Hold on. I'm all creative. This nine right here is in the tens place. This nine is in the hundreds place. So don't confuse those nines. All right. So that nine is in the tens place. Now we need to understand this. And I'm going to do this problem in three different ways. We're going to use the algorithm or basically, basically just the rules, the rule for rounding. Then we're going to use a number line to show what the answer should be. Then we're going to use a rounding hill to show what the answer should be. So I'm going to do the problem in three different ways. All right. We're going to get the same answer. I'm going to show you. All right. So look. So we look at the digit to the right of the place we're worried about, which is seven. All right. So seven is going to determine, right, the next door neighbor to the right, not to the left, not to the left, to the right, never to the left, always to the right. Write that down. Memorize that. When you're rounding, the digit to the right of the place that you're rounding to is always the digit that determines where you go, what you're going to do with this 9. All right? So, because this is a 7, right, five and up, the rule is 5 and above, give it a shove. So, if that was a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, or a 9, then this 9 is going up. If, if it had been a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4, it would go down or basically the digit would stay the same, right? But you would go down from 97 down to 90, all right? Now, what are our two choices? That's another thing you got to think about. What are our two choices? We only got two choices when we round them. We either going to round up to the next higher 10 or we're going to round down to the next lower 10. So we got two choices. I can either round this down to 90 or I can round it up to the next higher 10 which is actually going to be 100. So again, see, this is why I wanted to do this problem because a lot of times in school, the practice problems in class, they be easy. They be straightforward. And then you get one of these for homework and you're like, whoa, we ain't do, one, we ain't do nothing like this in class. I don't know how to do this, right? This, this problem is a little different, right? Because of these nines. When you see nines, things are a little different, right? But we can still handle it. It's, not, it's nothing too crazy, right? I'm going to show you. So sometimes the 100 is going to be the next 10, right? Why does that make sense? Because 100 is just 10 tens. 10 tens is 100, right? That's all it is. 10 tens is 100 because 10 times 10 equals 100. 10 $10 bills is $100. So 10 tens is 100, just like 9 tens is 90. If 9 tens is 90, 9 times 10 is 90, 10 tens is 100. That's the same thing as 100. So sometimes the next 10 is going to be 100. So if I was rounded up to the next 10, if this was just 97, it would be 100. But this is part of 997. 997. So I can't go to 100. So that means we got to go to the next place value. And this like problems like this, I'm going to repeat this. Problems like this where it's a bunch of nines or a few nines, we got to do these differently, right? Because we got to keep, sometimes we got to keep moving over to the next place value. So we go to the hundreds place and we say, oh, well, there's a nine here. So that makes this 997. So if I go up, I'm actually going to the next thousand, right? So if this, if this was just 997, then we then the next 10 would be a thousand. But it's not 997, it's 5,997. So that means 
the next 10 is actually 6,000. It's going to be after the 5,000. So we got 5,997. So that means the next 10 is actually going to be the next 1,000. So that's something we got to understand. Sometimes the nearest 10 will be the next the next bigger 100. Sometimes the nearest 10 will be the next bigger 1,000, like we got in this situation. The next bigger 1,000 is 6,000. All right? So now that means that our answer is 6,000. Now you might be confused saying, but I thought we was rounded to the nearest 10. So why we had why we why do we actually end up rounding to the nearest thousand? Because the question is, you gotta ask yourself, is like where will we go? The 97 is part of 997, and the 997 is part of 5,997. So in order to get up to the next 10, you gotta go to 6,000. 6,000 is the next 10. That's what it is. If this was just a plain number 97 by itself, we would go straight to 100. That's what we would do. We'd go straight to 100. And we'd be done. Or if this was just 997, we go straight to 1,000 and we'd be done, right? But dig this though. This is why doing problems in different ways so students can visualize is very helpful. So watch what I do. We're going to do the number line. All right? So watch this. I'm going to draw a number line like that. That's our number line. That's our horizontal line. It's also the x-axis. When you, when you get to algebra one, this is going to be the x-axis, all right? Well, actually pre-algebra, you don't gotta wait till algebra one for that. Now we're gonna put three vertical lines. One at this end, one at the left end, one at the right end, and one in the middle. Now, what's gonna go at the left end is the 10 that's lower than 5,997. The next lower 10. So if we count them by tens, right? And you get all the way up to 5,980. And then the next 10 would be 5,990. And then the next 10 would be actually 6,000, right? So the 10 that's before 97 is 90. The 10 that's before 97 is 90. So that means we're going to have 5,990, right? Now the 10 that's after 5,997 is 6,000. Because if we count them by 10s, we're going 5,990. The next 10 is going to be 6,000. This is just basic counting. Because what if we was counting by ones? If we was counting by ones, 5,991, 5,992, 5,993, 5,994, 5,995, 5,996, 5,997, 5,998, 5,999, 6,000. So I either I only got, when I'm rounded, remember, you always got to remember when you round it, you only got two choices. You either going down or you going up. Down or up. 5,990 if you go down, 6,000 if you go up. Now, what is this line for? This vertical line is for the halfway number, the halfway value. So halfway between 5,990 and 6,000 is this, 5,995. All right, 5,995. Now, we got to put, we got to plot, it's called plotting. Right? Just like when you get the pre-algebra and you're drawing graphs and you're plotting points, right? Introduce, we should introduce plotting right now. So we, this is what we're doing. So where is 5,997 at? Is it between these two numbers or is it between these two numbers? We don't got to worry about the exact location, but we know it's not between these two numbers because it's more than 5,995. And as you notice, the numbers get bigger as you go to the right. The numbers get bigger as you go to the right. So it's going to be over here somewhere. So let's say it's right here. 5,997. And then you ask yourself, based on this picture, because that's all it is, it's a picture, right? Just like we see pictures, we see videos on Instagram, on TikTok, on whatever, right? On YouTube, right? We see pictures. We can judge, is this number closer to 6,000 or is this number closer to 5,990? Which is it closer to? I think it's closer to this one. Right? As long as my eyes ain't lying to me. Yeah, it's closer to this number than it is to that number. All right? So that's why 6,000 is the answer. That's another way to see it. Right? This way, this might not make as much sense. It might or it might not. Either way, it's cool. You can see it on the number line. On the number line, you can see it. All right? Now, let's do it one more way with uh, also using the number line, but using what I call rounding hills. Rounding hills. So, all right, we do our two vertical lines, one at the left end, one at the right end, and I put 5,990. Why? Because if I round down, 
That's what the number would be. If I round up, it's going to be 6,000. Because if we count by tens, the next 10 after 5,990 is 6,000. And then what's our middle mark? Same thing as it was up here. Halfway is 5,995. Make sure y'all understand it, right? Halfway. Halfway usually is going to have a five at the end, if not always. No, I don't think always, but a lot of times it's going to be a five at the end. What's halfway between 990, well, 5,990 and 6,000? It's a difference of 10. If there's a difference of 10 between these two, then you got to take the 10, which is the difference, and divide that by two. You should know your division facts. 10 divided by two is five. So that's why 5,995 is your middle, is your middle number. Always make sure you know why. Always ask the question why in math. Math is meant to teach you to ask why. Always ask why. I know a lot of times people discourage people from, from asking questions. People discourage people from asking why. Be that person. Ask why. Make sure you understand why things are the way they are and make, make it make sense. All right? So this is why we have 5,995. Then what we're going to do is we're going to draw the apex apex or the zenith or the summit or the pinnacle right the top of the hill right any words you use for the top of the hill right boom all right so now then the question is where would this number go in relation to this hill it would be on this side in between these two numbers not between these two numbers in between these two numbers not between these two numbers in between these two numbers right so then it's going to be like 5997 and where would that be? That would be like a little, imagine this is a basketball right here on the hill. Then ask yourself this, what would this basketball do? Would it roll down the hill this way? Or would it roll up the hill against gravity and then roll down the hill that way? I think it would roll straight downhill because it's not going to divide gravity. All right? I know some people, some people don't believe in gravity. I don't know, but they also don't believe that the earth is round. I don't know. That's another conversation for another time, but whatever. Anyway, um, this basketball would roll down the hill, all right? And if it rolls down the hill, what's it going to hit? It's going to hit 6,000. So look, we just showed three ways why when you round 5,997 to the nearest 10, the answer is 6,000. 6,000 is the nearest 10, right? And you can see it on this number line. You can see it with the rounding hill, all right? Look where the ball is that lines up with that, all right? Now, again... You find the digit that's in the place you try to round to. In this case, it's this nine. You always look to the next door neighbor to the right, never to the left, to the right, never to the left, to the right, never to the left, right? It's seven. Seven is greater, it's five, it's part of the five or greater crew. So when it's five or greater, five or above, five or above give it a shove. So the nine goes up. So you're going up, but you can't just go up to a hundred because it's not just 97. And then you can't even go up to um, this is 997, so you can't even go up to 1,000 because it's not just 997. It's 5,997. That means your nearest 10 is actually 6,000. Your nearest 10 is actually 6,000, right? And that makes sense because, again, back to the purpose of rounding, what's the purpose of rounding? To create a number or to use a number that is simpler to work with, and it's simpler to work with because it's got more zeros. It's got more zeros. 5,997. That's more complicated, right? Rounding makes things simpler. We want to make things simpler sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes we just need a simple number that's close to the number we started with, all right? So rounding makes things simpler. And also another purpose for rounding, once you round, then you can estimate when you're adding numbers together, multiplying numbers together, dividing numbers by each other, or subtracting numbers from, from one another, all right? That's the purpose of rounding. When you're doing math, when you're learning math, don't think of it as a punishment, but try to understand what is it for. What's the purpose of what you're learning? And when we learn rounding, you learn rounding so we can create simpler numbers that are close to the numbers we started with that will then help us to do easier math, right, to arrive at results. And then, of course, what's the purpose of math? To make life easier and enable us to make better decisions. When we make better choices, life is good. You know what I'm saying? All right, so go continue to practice with these, and I'll see you all on the next video. Peace.